I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. You're going to learn what might be the best PDB on the market today. Now, I know a lot of us are moving away from using separate PDBs. We're using flight controllers with integrated PDBs, like my favorite flight controller, the Betaflight F3. But many people don't like to have their power handling and their sensitive data circuitry, like their, like, you know, the gyro. They don't like to have those on the same board. They like to have a little separation there. And there's good reasons for that. If you do want a separate PDB, here's why I think this one is so freaking good. One reason it's so freaking good is that it has an integrated current sensor. Anytime you see a board with a great big resistor like this, this is uh, the shunt resistor for the current sensing. It's a great big resistor because it has to pass a ton of current without building up heat. Uh, anytime you see that, that's an indication that the board has a current sensor. Uh, and in fact, this one does. And what this means is that if you have a flight controller that doesn't have a current sensor built in, which if your flight controller doesn't have a PDB, it probably doesn't have a current sensor. The only exception to that that I know of is the Omnibus Pro, which has a current sensor, but no PDB. Okay, fine. There's your trivia answer for the day. If you have a flight controller that doesn't have a current sensor, you can use current sensing. It'll ha Your flight controller will have a current sensor input for an external current sensor. And the problem with that is that you're probably not going to go buy, you know, pay 10 bucks or whatever for an external current sensor and then awkwardly solder it into your power lead. No, no, no. If it's not integrated into a board like this, you're probably just not going to do it. Well, now it is integrated. It's integrated into the board that you're going to have anyway. So you would, it looks like this is the current sensor output pin. You would wire this to the current sensor input of your flight controller. And then uh, you'd set, you know, then you have current sensing, just like uh, all of us who are using boards with current sensing built in. Another thing this PDB gets right is that it has not just a 5 volt regulator and you can see by the way that these are switching regulators which is that switching regulators are better in that they can handle more power while running cooler. Linear regulators is the alternative and linear regulators are cheap as beans but they get really hot. They have terrible uh, current handling capacity. And in fact, if you look at the rating for a linear regulator, it'll say something like 1.5 amps, but it's 1.5 amps if it's running in a refrigerator in the Arctic on Christmas day. And if it's running under real world conditions, it's often much, much less than, than uh, what it's actually nominally rated at. You typically find for the kind of linear regulators that we see on common PDBs, uh, a, a real current handling of around 200 to 350 milliamps. Uh, your mileage may vary. But switching regulators are much more efficient uh, and they essentially can achieve their rated capacity under a wider range of conditions and you can get a higher rated capacity out of much smaller components. Anytime you look at a board and you see it's got the, this right here is an inductor. It is a teeny tiny coil of wire, like a fishing line. Anytime you see a combination of an inductor and a bunch of capacitors like this, this is probably a switching regulator. And in fact, that's what we're seeing here. So it's got a five volt switching regulator, sure. And it's got not a 12 volt, but a 10 volt switching regulator. And this is a good thing also. It's a nice little step they've done. There's a couple reasons why this is good. The reason that 10 volts is better than 12 volts is that most of the components that we're going to use, they're not running at 12 volts internally. They're probably running at something like maybe 5 volts or maybe 3.3 volts internally. So, for example, you may have an FPV camera that will accept up to well, maybe even 36 volts as input voltage. But internally, it's stepping that down to 3.3 volts. And internally, it probably doesn't have an expensive switching regulator. It probably has a cheap linear regulator that's going to get super hot and it's going to get hotter the more volts it has to drop the hotter it's going to get so by feeding a lower input voltage into your components you're you're, you're making their cheap inferior regulators work less hard and you're stressing them less and most of these components will run just as well off 10 volts as they will off 12 volts they'll just run a little bit cooler and be a little bit less stressed the other advantage of 10 volts is that there are some components uh, for example i think many receivers are rated up to 10 volts but they're not rated up to 12 volts. So there are some components that you will be able to run off the 10 volt regulator that you couldn't run off a 12 volt regulator. And, uh, and then you'll get a little bit more flexibility in which regulator you install the component on. One downside of the 10 volt regulator is if you are gonna do something like, for example, 12 volt LEDs, well, they may be they may prefer the higher voltage. And so if you if you know for a fact you have something that absolutely needs 12 volts, then you may not prefer this one. But most stuff is going to be just as happy or happier at 10 volts as compared to 12 volts. 
If we look at the layout here, we can see that the motor pads are in the corner and that is where most people like to see them. So it's gonna keep your wiring neat and tidy. It does not have a separate ground pad for signal ground, but when you've got the, the, the pads this close together, I'm not sure that really even matters. If we were to put a separate signal ground pad here, I mean, you can just solder your signal ground right here to motor ground. It's, there's not really gonna be any difference. So that's not too big a deal. So I think this may be the best PDB on the market today if you are looking for a separate discrete PDB for your setup. Uh, it just has all the features that you could want, including a current sensor, which I've been, I've been pining for the longest time that PDB manufacturers should include current sensors, and now they finally have. Uh, and to boot, to, to, to top it all off, the price is a whopping $8.50. Okay, fine. Now, what, what could you possibly have to complain about? That's it. That's it for today. I uh, just want to make you aware of this product, if it's the kind of product you might be interested in. Thanks for watching, and happy flying.